How's it going, Marcus? Um, just after you've cut up the tape, uh, the running game has gotten on track in the second half and maybe kind of been stuffed in the first half. What has been the problem in the first half thus far? Uh, just uh, t sustaining like sustaining blocks, just a six-inch step here, a missed landmark here, uh, a trip, uh, a quarterback's path pulling it back too tight, just a bunch of little things that, that happened early in the season that we have to keep continuing to get ironed out. Uh, but it was uh, – you're right, it was getting stuffed early, and our guys, to our credit, to their credit, just kept fighting until we found found a seam. And then once we found the seam, I, I was really proud of them. Colin, no right. Marcus, you've talked the first two weeks about earning the right to talk and earning the right to kind of hold stuff back. How much of the playbook would you say you've used or shown through these first two weeks and kind of what's maybe next for this offense as you get into SEC play? Uh, I would say that we've not shown a lot. I think the first game we got control pretty quick and we just basically ran the same two run plays the entire game uh, in the second half. And I think uh, the other day, I mean, we, we kept shooting ourselves in the foot going three and out. So we had no rhythm, couldn't get anything going. And uh, we ended up running the same play over and over again when we did find that seam uh, in the second half. So there, I think there's still a lot out there on the table, obviously, with what DK can do and what he can bring to the table, uh, along with some of the other guys, and keep putting the backs uh, in certain situations. I think there's, there's still a lot out there. But, uh, you know, looking forward to getting it, getting it to grow, you know, to get it pl it's planted. We just got to get it to grow now. Corey Diaz, back left. Hey, Marcus, whether it's uh, Josh himself or, or the scheme, um, what do you think has allowed him to be able to, to come in and through these first two games be uh, one of the top options for, for Zeb at quarterback? Uh, I think just his work ethic since the spring. Uh, you know, he's really put the time in and he's committed to the game of football, uh, both on the field and off the field. And he's practiced like that the entire camp. So I think that we as a coaching staff and a team organization, and quarterback room have confidence that if we put the ball up, he's going to, you know, he's got a really good chance of coming down with it. And he's proved that to consistently do that day in and day out since uh, spring ball. So I look forward to seeing what he can do and sustain what he can sustain the rest of the season. Now that he's not just uh, number six, that's a body out there. He's, he's proven that he can make plays. You know, people are going to start covering him a little different. So um, I'm anxious to see him compete and continue to grow in the offense and be productive. Marcus kind of asked Shane this yesterday, but you guys obviously saw a lot of stacked boxes against ECU. Just when you're trying to establish a run and, and you do have that many guys in the box at the defense, I guess just what goes into being able to, to run the ball against that kind of front? I mean, is it a matter of just guys beating their guy one-on-one -on -one or is it, you know, hitting a couple passes over the top? Is it a combination of all of it? I guess just what kind of goes into sort of being able to establish a run game against that kind of front? Uh, well, we have to be smart with the plays that we're calling, and we have to make sure – I have to make sure I'm putting our guys in the best situation to, to be productive and have success. Uh, that was a very disruptive front we were playing just because they move everywhere. They're blitzing every single snap. Uh, so it disrupts your timing. And early in the season, it kind of it, – it, it got out of, it got after our psyche a little bit until we settled in. But I think that, you know, we have to do what we did when we separated the game. We have to throw the ball down the field. And uh, we did that a couple times early, but when we throw it, we also had to secure it. And we can't fumble the ball. I mean, we had a touchdown call back. We had a third down conversion fumble. Uh, so we, in that game, you had to throw the ball to get them to loosen up to allow you to run the football. So our guys hung in there, though, and uh, again, really proud of them. Hey, Coach, uh, in that East Carolina game, the second half, your run-to-pass ratio was like two to one, so you, you stuck with the run. When you fell behind 14 to nothing, um, was it how, – how disciplined do you think you were as a play caller to stick with the, with the game plan? I think a lot of times play callers might take the game plan and toss it when they fall two touchdowns behind. Is that a, a characteristic of you to, to stick with the game plan even though things aren't going the right way that maybe midway through a ball game? Uh, I think I, I take a lot of pride in having the discipline to do that. I think what allows a, a coordinator to do that is a defense that's playing at the level which our defense is playing. Uh, I had a lot of issues. It was very frustrating uh, to go three and out the four times that we did. Uh, it was, it, you know, it, it really tests you and it tests your discipline. But when you have a defense that's going out there and just knocking balls down, taking the ball away, scoring on defense, like you have three or four really, really talented running backs. I mean, you just you just trust it. You just keep handing them the ball, and you hope that 
you know, you, you catch a seam and all it takes is one seam and those guys are gone. I think, you know, later on, if we wouldn't have had success with the run late in the third, I think we'd have had to start throwing it, obviously. But we were still most of the second half still in a situation where we'll punt the ball and the defense is going to get it back in five, you know, five or less plays. So thank goodness the defense was playing at the level they were. Marcus, a couple for you. One, when you knew it was going to be Zeb and not Luke, how much did you have to tweak or change or just not do some things that maybe you would have done? Uh, there's, I mean, Luke can operate through the DK package, so we we constantly are growing the DK package and you know the multiple backfields and stuff. So not a lot. We had the plays on there. If if Luke was able to to go, he could have went and executed. Uh, but you know, him and Zeb are going to operate the same type of passing game and run action game, play and keeper game. So uh, not a lot. Uh, you know. And after watching your first two games, have you had to change any or add any new run schemes? Uh, just, I mean, not dependent on the back, but just your overall run scheme. Not really, no. It's, it's just weird. It, it, again, it's very frustrating because I, I don't like, we didn't like the feel of that game, obviously, like a lot of people early on at the East Carolina game. Uh, but you go through that first game and you didn't have to do a lot. And then you go through that East Carolina game and what you thought might be successful was not. Then you had to adjust a little bit in the second half. And so you're sitting here two games into it, and you feel like you haven't really gotten the meat and potatoes of the run game going with what you're trying, what you had envisioned going into the season. So we're anxious to continue to you know, work hard during practice and get to a situation where we can get the run game going and, and get the full allotment of, of plays and schemes that we have out there available. Mark, sticking with the run game, just how close are you to really figuring out what this team's good at from a run game perspective, whether it's gap scheme, outside zone, inside zone, or pin and pull? How closer do you feel? Uh, I, don't, I could give you a fake answer about how man, I'm so close. I really have no idea right now. Like, we are, we are just going to make sure, you know, each running back's a little different. So this running back can run this well. This running back can run this well. This left tackle blocks this play well. This right tackle blocks this play well. So it's a matter of being smart enough to – Make certain calls based on where you are on the field, who's in the backfield, uh, where you're, you know, which side of the line are you attacking, what's the attack point, and so just I think that's what I'm trying to do is just figure out how to get that organized and get that executed on game day to make sure that we're maximizing our potential. And looking at Georgia, just what about their defense is challenging, and how much of a test is it going to be for this offense? <laughs> that's a really that's a tough question right there. Uh, Everything about their defense is challenging. I mean, they look like I just came from the Panthers. Like I, I talked to some of those guys early in the week. I was like, we're doing the protection plan. It's a, it's an NFL scheme on third down. Their sub, sub third down protection is or blitz pressure package is unbelievable. You know, you, you mix in the the talent at DB, the length of DB, the speed, the the leadership. I mean, that number seventeen, that linebacker scares me. Uh, I mean, he is he is an absolute warrior out there, and he organizes and orchestrates the whole defense. Their D line, they bring four in and four off. Uh, great pass rushers, so they're a challenge at every single position uh, for us offensively right now. So, to answer your question, it's going to be a great challenge. But like most competitors, our guys are, and, and myself and Coach Beamer, we are excited about you know to get to go do this. This is going to be really really hard, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Marcus, again on the run game with the the backs having different skill sets, could that potentially be an asset when you're when you're going into a game against a defense as, as aggressive as Georgia's? I think so. Yeah, I mean, just because I mean, you you would hate to have cookie cutter this the you know two or three guys that can only do this, and so Georgia takes that away, and you're stuck with nothing. I think that at least it allows you to be multiple, and it proves to. Uh, calls defenses to have to prepare for different schemes. I mean, they're having to prepare for gap schemes, wide zone schemes, the duo scheme, draws, things of that nature. So I think it's going to help us in the in the long run. Like I said earlier, just right now, just ready to get it going, you know, after game two. Um, the interception jet, or Zeb threw, uh, what was going on there? What can you kind of tell us about that play? And how uh, it, it was a design play to go to our tight end. Uh, we got in a, a unique formation. And uh, we, we were trying to get them, you know, get certain angles and leverage on defenders. And I felt like we had it. And just the timing of our tight end, when he looked for the ball and when Zeb threw, for the, threw the ball was not timed up. Uh, who's, who was right or wrong, that's in-house. But, you know, I think that going back, if we could do that one over again, I think we'd have a, a lot of success with that play. And I think we'd get it fixed. But you don't get do-overs. And I think we learned our lesson and we'll move from it, move on from it.
and and I guess you'll probably have a similar answer for for the ball that I guess Jaheim went and got when he and Josh were sort of in the same area. What can you? Hell of an interception, that? you know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's weird because Jaheim had a route where he was supposed to basically run over in this area and stop, and then suck the defense down, and then try to throw the ball over their head. Well, when Jaheim, Jaheim came out of the play. They, the run action was such a good run action that everything just disappeared and there was nothing but grass. So Jaheim's a young player. I mean, his innate reaction was run. And so he just kept running, running. He looks up the balls. I mean, Josh has come across the defender's face. He's getting ready to catch the ball. And then like a freaking something in the, in the swamp just jumped out of nowhere and just grabbed the ball from him. Uh, but I mean, it was a great athletic play. Obviously, we don't want that. We'd rather Josh just be able to catch that ball with just him and that defender and see what he can do. But Little things like that. I mean, Jaheim hasn't played a lot of football, but even in plays like that that he wasn't supposed to make, he's so super athletic. I mean, it shows you just the possibility of what he brings to our offense. Go to Ben Portnoy, front middle. Uh, Marcus, not to harp on the run game too much, but, uh, you know, obviously you guys rode Juju a little bit down the stretch and the hot hand. I mean, I know we've talked about that, that that's kind of ideally how this looks. I mean, is that kind of what you have envisioned this looking like when you find a guy and he, he rolls and that, that just – you know, you just kind of ride him and see where it goes. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, he was playing at a high level. And, um, you know, at that point, especially to that point where we had had little to no success, when we had somebody rolling like that, we weren't about to take him out. But, you know, it started with him on special teams. Like, he was a key, key factor in the block on DK's return. He goes out there, DK gets a little banged up, he catches it, he returns one, sets up, you know, the tying field goal. Uh, and then he gets out there and he, just his competitive uh, nature – of how he's made up is just allows him to have success and be, have productivity. So, wasn't about to take him out. If he needed a blow, we'd give him a blow, but we got him back in there quick. All right, we got time for one last question here. Colin Taylor on the front right. Marcus, how would you evaluate the offensive line's pass protection through the first two games? Uh, I would say a layman would watch it and say they can't pass protect, but when you peel the layers back and you understand certain calls that are being made from the quarterback position, the communication between the quarterback, running back, offensive line, there were two snaps the other day that they weren't even bringing pressure. And the communication between the quarterback O-line and the running back, we slid the line one direction and didn't even block a defensive end. So when you don't block a defender, whether they're rushing three or four, you're going to have quarterback pressure. And when it happens fast, you think, man, they can't protect. They're not, they don't know what, you know, they're being overwhelmed. And that wasn't the case at all. Just it's communication. And then at the end of the game, they just started heating us up, zero pressure. So they were always bringing one more than we could get, than we could protect. And you saw we were just taking shots down the field and Josh was uh, making plays. So uh, we're still right on, right on point, in my, in my opinion. Uh, as long as we continue to get our communication better, and we have to eliminate putting them in terrible positions like we did the other day early in the game. I mean, there shouldn't have been any pressure on two of those sacks that they had. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you guys very much.